One of Pixar's most endearing films might be Monsters, Inc., which mixes an original monster world of a workplace comedy and a touching buddy film of Sully and the lovable Boo. Last year, I did a video on the names you might recognize in the credits for Pixar's first feature, Toy Story. Between that film's release and the production of Monsters, Inc. at the then-new Emeryville studio, Pixar found itself with a whole batch of new employees who contributed to not just the making of Monsters, Inc., but other Pixar films. So let's celebrate and name these talents now. Here are the top ten names you may recognize in the Monsters, Inc. credits. Kyle Balda. Balda has recently made a name for himself as one of the principal directors at Illumination Entertainment, but like many animation directors, he worked his way up. He began his career at Lucasfilm, where he worked at their video game department, and then started animating at ILM on The Mask and Mars Attacks, and then served as animation supervisor for Jumanji. After a stint bringing to life the Grim Reaper in Peter Jackson's The Frighteners, Balda moved to Pixar, where he animated on A Bug's Life, Toy Story 2, and Monsters, Inc. Eventually, he found himself at Illumination, handling layout on Despicable Me, and directing a series of Minions shorts. After co-directing The Lorax, he directed Minions and this summer's Despicable Me 3. And to nobody's surprise, he is currently directing Minions 2. Peter Desev one of the most prolific character designers working in animation today, Desev is sought after by many a studio for his excellent work. It's of little surprise he has worked at Pixar, serving as part of the visual development team on the likes of Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, A Bug's Life, and Ratatouille. However, his most endearing work is probably at Blue Sky Studios. He has served as the character designer on the Ice Age films, giving those prehistoric creatures their distinctive appearance and he certainly deserves a lot of the credit for Scrat's iconic look. And he has collaborated with Disney Animation on a number of occasions, doing character designs for The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Mulan, and Treasure Planet. He also was responsible for the initial designs for Creech in Monster Trucks, when he looked a lot more frightening and grotesque. He continues working with a variety of studios, as he recently contributed his efforts to Sony Animation's upcoming hybrid projects Peter Rabbit and Goosebumps 2. It's always an exciting moment when Peter Desed's name shows up in the credits, that's for sure. Lou Romano. Even if his name doesn't instantly ring a bell, his voice certainly does. He started as a much smaller character, and then uh, as the film progressed, he became a, a much bigger character, as out of necessity, I think. Romano is one of a number of Pixar artists who has provided the voice for major character in one of their animated films, specifically Linguini in Ratatouille. He started his career at Turn Entertainment, starting out in effects on The Page Master and also doing storyboarding and backgrounds on Dexter's Laboratory and The Pop-Up Girls. He even helped out Craig McCracken on the short film that would eventually lead to The Pop-Up Girls. Lou Romano was one of a number of artists who worked on The Iron Giant, who Brad Bird brought over to Pixar. After working with the visual development team from Monsters, Inc., Romano's retro 16-inspired production design was a key part of The Incredibles, and even earned him an Art Director's Guild nomination, a rare feat for an animated feature. Recently, he served as production designer on The Little Prince, did design work on a number of Leica features, and handled layout and backgrounds on the recent Samurai Jack revival. So, if you are looking for somebody to bring a distinct look to your animated feature, or even just provide a funny voice, Lou Romano is your man. Gifui Bodo. That funny 2D animated intro that starts the film, you have Gifui Bodo to thank for that. His unique animation style made him a natural fit to work on the opening titles, and the Monsters, Inc. DVD even has a special feature dedicated solely to his work on the film. Bodo's first credit was at Disney Animation, when he was an animation assistant for The Little Mermaid, and then he worked as an animator for Wilbur in The Rescuers Down Under, The Beast in Beauty and the Beast, and The Village Shaman in Pocahontas. Bodo also worked on the story and design teams for The Hunchback of Notre Dame, A Bug's Life, and Monsters, Inc. In 2009, he directed the short film Let's Pollute, which earned him an Oscar nomination. In recent years, Bodo contributed designs on Madagascar 3, Free Birds, and even Rob Minkoff's heist film, Flypaper. Harley Jessup. One of the top production designers at Pixar, Jessup has had quite a varied career. 
He began at Lucasfilm art directing Twice Upon a Time and The Ewok Adventure. He then moved to visual effects at ILM, where he won an Oscar for Inner Space and was nominated for one more for Hook. Joseph also had a hand on the likes of Return to Oz and Ghostbusters 2. After serving as a production designer on James and the Giant Peach, Jessup went to Pixar, where he has stayed ever since, providing some impressive production design, creating the factory floors of Monsters, Inc., the restaurants of Paris and Ratatouille, the magical theater of Presto, European cities with an automobile twist in Cars 2, and the natural landscapes of the good dinosaur. Jill Colton. One of the people who developed a story for Monsters, Inc., Colton is one of those artists with a small list of credits, but her accomplishments are certainly many. She started as one of many animators to dip her feet into The Thief and the Cobbler. She eventually got to animate on Cat Stone Dance and worked as a story artist on Toy Story and A Bug's Life and helped design new characters for Toy Story 2. Her story skills are what led her to be heavily involved with developing the story for Monsters, Inc. And she caught the eye of Sony's then new animation studio, where she directed their first animated feature, Open Season. Recently, she was involved with developing DreamX Animation's upcoming film, Everest. Whatever Jill Colton's next project turns out to be, I look forward to seeing her name in the credits again. John Cars. One of the top computer animators in the industry, Cars has been involved with some incredible breakthroughs in his career. Cars originally began at Blue Sky, where he worked on the lighting for the digital dancing cockroaches in Joe's apartment, and the Oscar-winning short, Bunny, who moved to Pixar to work on A Bug's Life. But his most impressive accomplishment was probably on Monsters, Inc., where he was the lead animator on Sully, and was responsible for giving him all of his many unique expressions and handling the complex nature of his hair. He remained with Pixar until 2007, when he eventually moved to Walt Disney Animation Studios. Much like with Sully, Cars had the tricky task of making sure Rapunzel's hair entangled stayed in place and had that magical quality to it. In 2012, he directed the awe-inspiring, hand-drawn CG hybrid short Paperman, which won him a deserving Academy Award for Best Animated Short. It's little surprise that since then, he's been heavily in demand in the animation world. Bob Peterson. Arguably one of the funniest creative talents to work at Pixar, one can see so much of Peterson's heart and humor in the films made there, and he has been a key element of the studio since Toy Story, when he was an animator. He subsequently segued to the story department for A Bug's Life, and then became the story supervisor for Monsters, Inc. He co-wrote the screenplay for Finding Nemo, and then joined his pal, Pete Docter, to co-direct and co-write Up. He came up with the idea and was the original director of The Good Dinosaur, and while he ended up being let go from the project, he remains at Pixar, where he continues to contribute to the films, and just this summer co-wrote Cars 3. He also delights as a voice actor, having played the paperwork persistent Roz in Monsters, Inc. I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. The singing Eagle Ray teacher in Finding Nemo. Magic, mystical logic, after your physical logic, all the rest are too deep for you and me to see. And his most endearing role, Doug the Dog in Up. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. Bob Peterson is currently developing a new film at Pixar, and here's hoping he gets to stay in the director's chair this time. Rhett Reese. While Pixar has their internal brain trust and story team, the studio will also hire outside writers to help develop and punch up scripts. One of the original writers assigned to work on Monsters, Inc. was Rhett Reese, who has had quite the rise in the industry. At the time, he not only contributed to Monsters, Inc., but also Disney's Dinosaur and the direct-to-video sequel Tarzan 2. However, Reese really hit it big when he collaborated with Paul Wernick on the script for Zombieland. The zippy, self-referential humor of the film definitely helped pave the way for them to get the chance to bring the beloved, fourth-wall-breaking anti-hero Deadpool to the big screen. The massive blockbuster success of Deadpool, along with being credited as the real heroes at the start of the film, has certainly propelled Reese and Wernick into being heavily in-demand screenwriters. But seeing Rhett Reese's name in the Monsters, Inc. credits 
definitely ups one's curiosity into wondering which of his contributions made it to the finished film. And the number one name you may recognize from the Monsters Inc. credits is... Floyd Norman. Not many artists from Walt Disney's era are still active today, but Norman certainly is. The first African-American animator at Disney, Norman started working the studio as an in-between artist on Sleeping Beauty, and then graduated to assistant animator for 101 Dalmatians and The Sword in the Stone, before getting the chance to work closely with Walt Disney in the story department of The Jungle Book. Following that, he started his own studio of vignette films, and then moved to television, working primarily as an animator and story artist at Hanna-Barbera. He returned to Disney to storyboard on a number of projects, and at Pixar, he contributed his efforts to Toy Story 2 and Monsters, Inc. If you want an overview of Floyd Norman's amazing life, I highly recommend the documentary Floyd Norman and Animated Life, which nicely touches on his career and his place in animation history. Monsters, Inc. is just one of many animated projects he has worked on in his lifetime. Thank you to Floyd Norman, and thank you to the many talented artists and filmmakers who helped make Monsters, Inc. such a wonderful film we will watch and cherish for many years. See you next time.